As we gather here today, we acknowledge the original inhabitants of the traditional lands we are on, where they held ceremony and lived with their families. Land acknowledgements are complicated on this sacred ground, but we recognize this as the traditional land of the Wichita, Caddo, Apache, Osage, and Kiowa, as well as the absentee Shawnee and the Chickasaw. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement upon this land. Oklahoma has been the homeland of many distinct nations, and we recognize the stewardship and pay respect to all these indigenous communities, past, present, and future. Those who caretake these lands, and we offer our care and gratitude to them and the land, water, and air. Thank you. My name is Hocus Skenendor. I'm actually a recent graduate from the MFA program at the University of Oklahoma. Also have a bachelor's degree from the Institute of American Indian Arts in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Been an artist for many number of years, but have really taken an interest in showing more of the style writing community and the artwork and some of the thinking that goes into that work. Hello, everyone. Um, here to discuss the exhibition that you see before you, which is entitled the, the Four Elements. And so the original idea was to introduce the four elements of hip hop. And so the visual component of this exhibition was going to be us primarily showing art or works that were created by style writers, maybe more familiar with the term graffiti. We're actually trying to move away from that. It's got a lot of negative connotations. And if you're familiar with broken window theory, that's the idea that crime is facilitated by broken windows in a, in a neighborhood particularly where you see the broken window and it leads to more crime. So graffiti has been lumped in with that idea. And so as artists and arts educators and people who've been involved in communities, we're really trying to move away from the kind of ne negative connotations of those things. To kind of backtrack a little bit, hip hop culture is really considered to have four pillars. The first one is um, DJing or uh, turntablism. The second pillar is uh, emceeing or rapping. The third is breakdancing. And then the fourth is style writing. And for some folks, there's actually an additional component, which is the fifth pillar, which is participation. So really without people participating either as practitioners of these different areas or as uh, viewers, you don't have hip-hop culture. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, uh, there's been restrictions on spaces and how they get used. Plus, out of respect for Resonator hosting this event, we really backed away from the uh, programming that we were hoping to have, which was gonna involve an opening night with you know, a, a small uh, uh, presentation of like break dancing, DJing, uh, an MC battle. And so really, that kind of got, got condensed down into just uh, our, our, our resident um, <laughs> hip-hop expert, which is Parrish, and he was able to come out all the way from Texas, which was really great, and he got to do a little bit of a DJ set, also got to MC. We didn't really get any breaking involved, but he is a b-boy, and so a b-boy generally references somebody who's good at all of those elements. One of the other intentions was to be able to get uh, films screened in here like there was some movies that we wanted to show that kind of showcase the different elements there's a film called scratch it has to do with uh, the DJ culture um, we were hoping to maybe show style wars or another one of these documentaries on graffiti or style writing um, and maybe open up like a discussion with a you know a small group of artists or people but you know we're just thankful that we had the opportunity to kind of get the get the artwork out you know, get some semblance of what we had intended uh, out in the universe for people to be able to be aware of and maybe see. So out of all the artists that were exhibited in this, um, I was able to approach a contingency of people from New Mexico because that's where I have roots. And so they, I approached some individuals, uh, some of their works in the show, like an uh, individual that goes by the name of Saba, another guy by the name of Release. We've got Mike 360, Parish One, um, an artist from Albuquerque, Al Albert Rosales, um, and then I finally had Strike and IROC, who all contributed works to the show. So I think what's, what's good about this particular exhibition is there's a real diversity in the kind of images that are being shown here. So really when I think of style writing, you know, my go-to is was referred to as pieces. So lettering, the abstracted lettering with the multiple colors and the sort of like 
shallow dimensionality, you know, drop shadows or 3D. But I think what you see here too are, the, you know, the pop culture references, like particularly with this um, sort of Justice League little piece here, um, actually taking road signage or signs and kind of transforming the sort of everyday. I think when uh, young people started riding on trains in New York City, their first thought wasn't pop culture, but if you look back in that history, like there was a, I don't remember the artist who did it, but there was a, somebody that did a reproduction of the Warhol soup cans on the subway train. So I mean, there's always been this connection with pop culture icons and reflecting that in the lettering and the work. So I think this kind of comes full circle in a way because it's pulling back from the everyday. I mean, to me, if you know the right spaces, you can find graffiti or style writing. And it, it is becoming more commonplace, but really now it's only now that we're being able to kind of look at it more critically and maybe approach it from like an academic standpoint. And like I said, ditching that broken window theory and applying more of an artistic lens on it. I mean, even with the, the Warhol reproductions on the train, right? Um, with this juxtaposition of anybody can do it anywhere in whatever way that they want to do it. As with anything, there's a few different thoughts on that and for me personally I think if you look at the community there's this sort of strict adherence to oh you know make sure you're doing putting in the street work before you approach the gallery mm -hmm. because that's really where the the rawest unfiltered version of it exists and so to to confine it to a gallery space it's the kind of circumvent the real nature of it but also there's something about that democratic it's really a democratic in a way that Anybody can pick up a spray can. I think with enough time, you'd be able to become comfortable with that material. Um, but it, you know, there's that other factor of you know, it's different from sitting in front of a canvas or even a permission wall when you're you know, like climbing on a billboard, running around in a train yard. Like there's these in interesting environmental factors that get thrown in there. Sure. Uh, to say nothing of law enforcement. <laughs> but um, I think it's interesting that more of a space is available now. Whereas when I think like 20 years ago, it was really only a handful of really kind of high profile individuals like Cause or Twist, um, Barry McGee, um, even Obey uh, Giant and his whole uh, poster propaganda thing. Like there was just this really small group of people that had kind of risen in the ranks of the fine art world. And now I think that playing field has been leveled quite a bit and it's good. Like so much of fine art is I would say old white men doing, you know, <laughs> variations on color study. I think that this is a, it's like a great innovation and a movement towards really saying like, this is where the real history of innovation is. And it's not in the hands of like Bryce Martin and it's in the future somewhere else doing something else with fewer rules by different people. Right, and I think that, um, I think it really plays well into this idea that's, you know, there's this, there's that whole destruction of the grand narrative, you know, that comes along with postmodernism. Mm -hmm. And you know, people say, oh, you know, it's terrible because everything's been so debased. But I think with this, it's really intriguing because there's this art history that runs parallel to other art histories. Like, we're really fortunate you know, when you look at the history of graffiti, if you familiarize yourself with um, style writing art history, you know, you recognize that New York City was an epicenter, but it was actually born in Philadelphia. And then it also has roots in California. And so these two epicenters kind of popped up. And then just in different locales across the country, you know, there's another specific art history. So it's not just the New York City trains or people painting out in California. But all across the country, you know, there's individual art histories and certain individuals who kind of planted the seeds for other generations of writers to come up. But this has also been kind of mirrored across the globe. And that's one of the things that's fascinating to me is there's really not another art movement that I'm aware of that has made its way to like Brazil, the UK, Portugal. Um, there's even uh, strains of it that are very specific to uh, South Africa and that were linked with the anti-apartheid movement. And really, like, anywhere you go across the globe where somebody can pick up something to write with, sure. there's an influence that goes all the way back to New York City. So it's crazy that it's really, it's, it's global, and that's kind of amazing. I think um, because the ground 
the groundwork was laid by different people from different kinds of backgrounds, especially when you're looking at New York City. Um, really, like a lot of the, the, I don't want to use the word pioneers, I think it's got really bad connotations. <laughs> yeah. I guess the, uh, the foundations were laid by people of color in hip hop. And so whether it's DJing, like when you look at Cool Herc, who came from Jamaica, brought some of that uh, Jamaican vibe of like playing live records, you know, that's the foundations of, of spinning records, you know. And that whole history of Jamaican music, you know, that's black. It's a black history. And uh, breakdancing as well. I mean, it really, like, different ethnicities, different backgrounds all kind of laid that groundwork. And so I think it instantly hit the ground running with multiple viewpoints under the, under the wing of these different movements. And especially with style writing. I mean, I think Saba in particular is an interesting guy. He's bringing Pueblo architecture into the actual letter forms. And so I think there's that opportunity too, where when certain artists decide to create certain pieces, you know, they can actually fall upon kind of cultural understanding as something that influences the work that they produce. So that's that's kind of a big thing, and that's not always the case with with Western the Western construct of like going to art school and making work. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's uh, something that comes to mind uh, is on I think it's like the first song on Black on Both Sides by Most Def where he talks about hip hop as being this living thing and the hip hop being the people. Mm. And like, it's not some giant living in the hillsides, you know, the way, <laughs> like I think to quote him directly, but yeah. um, I think that that's a really, I think that, that it's the participation that you talked about earlier as one of the, as one of the pillars. Is there anyone that you would recommend that people look at or listen to or ways that um, someone could maybe educate themselves and enable their appreciation of things that they might that might feel uh, foreign or outside their education or experience. Well, I think <clears throat> one of the go tos that I think you can approach would be music, and so <clears throat> you know, there's these mainstream rappers. Good for them for doing their thing and, and reaching a wide audience, but I think. When you look at the quote unquote underground or maybe more local kind of acts, like that's a great way to start. Like, I can't think off, right offhand, you know, since I'm mostly a visual arts kind of person, yeah. music wise, but I know Oklahoma, Oklahoma City's got a huge like hip hop scene and, and Tulsa too. And so, you know, if that, you know, if you happen to be from Oklahoma, that's a good place to start. I know that um, most recently, in terms of something that kind of relates back to this exhibition, um, there was a big show, I think in 2017, called Not For Sale. And so a few, a handful of like local uh, style writers just went in and painted a gallery. Mm. And so that exhibition was a really good one. So part of it too is I think just keeping an eye or ear to the ground, looking out for things that might be popping up and they may seem a little unfamiliar, but you know, if you take that chance and go see them, you know, that's, that's kind of a first step. So style writing is my forte, so that's, that's where I tend to sure. think. Sure, sure. Um, I believe the Museum of Graffiti has just opened up. I think they're located in Florida. I think most recently there was a, oh, a big exhibition, I think, in New York. And the name kind of slips me at the moment. Beyond the Streets. So that was a really big one that just recently happened. But exhibition catalogs, too. So, I mean, there's a big exhibition catalog from that show that would be a good one to pick up. Um, come on down to Resonator and take a look at this one. Uh, buy a Hell plug -in. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, in closing, I want to thank uh, the Resonator Institute for hosting us to kind of open up some more dialogue about hip-hop and hip-hop culture. Um, and I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Ashley, who helped us kind of gather our wits <laughs> and so helped us to kind of organize before we got the ball rolling. Definitely Garrett for bringing in the uh, contingency of writers and artists from Texas and contributed to the show and everybody back home in New Mexico who was able to contribute. And so if you're interested in checking out the show, please contact somebody from Resonator. They've got an Instagram, so you can hit them up there or maybe uh, contact Curtis or any of the other individuals that are involved with the organization. We'd love to have you come in safely in teeny tiny groups as is requested. If you want to come actually look at the show, uh, a lot of the work is available. So if you'll just contact either uh, myself, Hocus Kenendor, or Garrett uh, Morgan, um, we both have Instagram handles. Mine's Hoka Skenendor, or Hoka underscore Skenendor on Instagram, and you can just find me as Hoka Skenendor on uh, Facebook. 
And yeah, we'll be able to uh, maybe put you in contact with artists if you're interested in collecting some of the work. Um, there's also prints that are available too, and proceeds from that go back to Resonator, so please support them too. Um, that's about it, so thank you for your time.